You are like light for the whole world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bowl. Instead, it is put on the lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before people so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 14, 16. Welcome, everyone. You may be seated. We are here because we have the opportunity to share in Marie's life as family, as friends, neighbors, co-workers, patients. We are here to show support and love to her family. We are here because Marie made our lives better for being a part of them. And today we honor and remember her. I am Shauna Meek, and I am privileged to be a part of this celebration of the life of Hedwig Marie Knorr. Last week was Nurses Appreciation Week, and Wednesday was Setende Mai, which is Norwegian Constitution Day. So the timing for this service to honor this wonderful lady could not be more fitting. And the service today will be short and sweet, as requested by Marie. Hopefully, I don't get too wordy. Now, I met Marie here through the church, and I got to know her over visits during coffee time after services. And initially, I was drawn to Marie because of her accent. She sounded just like my grandparents. We bonded over our shared Norwegian ancestry, and we became friends. And I continued to have phone conversations and visits with her when she moved into the Piner Haven and later long-term care. And anyone who ever met Marie knows how much she liked a good visit. And I enjoyed everyone we had, as I'm sure you did as well. I'm very grateful for that time that we spent together. And hopefully, we all feel that thankfulness to, to today as we remember good times and laughs shared visits and dancing, caring and loving. Let's pray. Creator, spirit of life, you have shared with us the life of Marie and it is with grateful hearts we give thanks for all the goodness in her, which now lives and grows in all of us who knew her. As we honor Marie's life and say goodbye, help us to gain courage to face the future unafraid. Grant us joy in our remembering and thankfulness for a life well lived. Grant us openness as we express our loss and comfort when we feel her absence. Strengthen us and draw us closer to one another. Enable us to serve and give to us that sense of peace and joy that comes from knowing we are all connected in this life. Amen. And I invite uh, Marie's children, Maureen and Morris and Ellen and Sarah's husband, John, to come forward and share Marie's life story and words of remembrance. Right now, you bet. <laughs> I caught you unawares, did I? Big letters, so I don't have to take my glasses off to read this. It's not it's going to take as long as this might look. <laughs> okay, Mom, first off, we want to thank everyone for coming to celebrate Mom's life today. Second, a public thanks to Maureen for being here for both of our parents. Fielding phone calls, questions in every possible direction, and on call 24 hours a day. Run to the hospital etc., etc., for five years, at least. Most of you know about Mom's incredible life story, so this part will be short. Her formative years from 10 to 15 were spent under the Nazi occupation in Norway. After the war at 17, coming to Canada to start a new life. Times were tough in Norway after the war. I could never imagine crossing that ocean to start over alone at that age. 
I talked with Rita Reynolds Westworth last night, and she told me how much she always admired that bravery. Learning English was with lifelong friend Joan Bunce in North Attleburg. Nursing school, and then coming to Corrobert to nurse, meeting Dad, eventually to marry, and have four children. Tough as nails, too. Just like Dad, she wasn't going to leave this world until she was done, despite countless medical battles. Mom the person. Hard work and dedication in everything she did. She loved going to the lake and traveling. I remember what may have been Mom, Mom and Dad's first long trip to Expo 67 in Montreal, and we stayed with Alva Reynolds. Much more traveling in Europe was in their future. Dad told me that one of his biggest regrets was not traveling more. I think they did pretty good. We did everything as kids because of Mom. Where do we even begin? How about starting simple? Swimming with Al at Alcox Dam with Thesans and other families when we were young because we couldn't always go to the lake. So let's go swimming. That would lead to canoeing with Ardeth at Alcock and me eventually st stepping or stopping there for a quick cooling dip and hauling bales and summer following. When I was playing hockey, I'll never forget this, but before I could drive, we always made it to town even when Dad couldn't go. I remember Mark Schrafel and I walking in front of the car for a mile to the highway because it was complete whiteout and one arm on the hood guiding Mom so we didn't leave the road. But we made it. I don't know if we won or lost. I, that wasn't important. We made the road. <laughs> Ball tournaments were the best. Dad would play. Mom watched us for our kids. Tramping Lake was our favorite. We got to swim in that water. Um, play in the playground and watch Dad. The big barbecue at the end of the day. And Mom organized all that behind the scenes stuff. Mom made sure we all learned how to swim and get chances at summer camps. For me, I remember Prince Albert, Prince Albert Park, Buffalo Pound, Outlook, Pike Lake, etc., etc. Jackfish Lake was like a second home in our tent trailer. Dad had farm, and away we went. Visiting the Iverson relatives, the Bunce family, was always great fun. Saskatchewan Winter Games in 1971 at Blackstrap, went to that. Moose Jaw Air Shows, and she'd pack a lunch, and we'd go to that too. So many memories, never to forget. Whenever I called Mom in later years, it was how is everyone? Town gossip and her new hobby of following the markets. That would go on forever if I didn't somehow change the subject and switch gears. She loved that, talking markets. She had a tremendous inter interest in history as mine developed. Even if he, she didn't understand what I was studying, she wanted to learn. Beginning when I was about 16, it seemed to be constant. You should be a history teacher or an engineer and on and on. And she always pushed me to do better and I kept trying, never satisfied with some really good jobs and wanting more. The big day I was finally published made her entire day. She was just so thrilled. Now I'm writing a book every single time we talk for the last few years, are you done yet? <laughs> I want to read it before I go. I tried very hard, but learned to be a perfectionist from her. Leaves never fall far from the tree. You really can't push research, and that book will be dedicated to her. Me taking my responsibilities seriously was always very important to her, and taking care of myself, too. I would be visiting her, and she, she would say, every time, after a visit, a short visit. Mom, it's a three-hour drive home for you. You have to work to do and you need rest too. You better get going. Well, finally I'd agree, and then she would jump up and walk me to the door. When she was bedridden and not supposed to move, get up by herself, she shocked me and the staff 
This totally stunned me. I sucking her breath in, flipping over, standing up and walking me out. The last time we talked, it was like the famous saying, deja vu all over again. Marine saw it too, and we both smiled. When I was young and late getting up to milk the cows or get to work or whatever, I dreaded these words. Mom at the stop of the year, at the top of the stairs, hollering, Morris, hurry up! Now she wanted a drink of water. Morris, hurry up! In strong, loud, clear words. Just like the old days. Why, I just, wow. Mom, I know you're watching with Dad and Sarah. We'll meet again, Mom. And yes, I'll finish that book. It will be dedicated to you and all you taught me about life. And then ending with, Bell, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, now I wish I had made my words a little bit bigger like you. So as we were growing up, Mother didn't say much about her life as a child in Norway. We were always very curious. We asked many times, especially about the war. She would say a few things and then change the subject. So one bright spot was COVID. I was able to sit with her and talk. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't go out in the common area. I loved busy with the ladies there. And then, sorry. But, and then in the hospital, I learned about mother. I had that opportunity that I'll never ever lose. So she talked about her father. She was very proud of her father coming to Canada in 1905 to 1920. Things were very poor in Norway. He had come here to uh, work on the railroad. He came to live with three sisters in North Balford. Two sisters went to Spokane and one sister stayed in North Balford and married into the Iverson family. While in North Balford, um, okay, he returned to Norway in 1920, married and raised a family, and we have a very adventurous family here. Um, a lot of them have gone on holidays. Mother's very proud of you for going on holidays when you can. I know you have a bucket list of more places you want to go see, as you see, they're all busy with their own little families. But Mother would really like you to go out and explore the world, like she did. Mother explored the world when she could. She really loved that, and Dad, when he was able to go along. So when Mother came in 1949 to Canada, she wanted a better future. She knew she wasn't going to get that in Norway. She came to Canada. She wanted to be a nurse. And if it wasn't for Joan, here's Joan here. Joan wants, oh, there she is. She always said, Joan, it's because of you I became a nurse, and we're very thankful for that. Um, her mother's sister, Greta, actually came to Canada in 1958 and went to Saskatoon. She received her LPN while she was here. Then went back to Norway in 1959, and that is when Mom and, and her friend were actually going to go to BC the next month when she had her job here. They had all these plans, but you know what? There was that fateful barn dance, and Mother never left. <laughs> and their future goes on. So anyway, she was telling me a little bit more about, um, about the war. So what I'd like everyone to do, this is what she said. She said, everyone close your eyes. I want you to look to the horizon and see dots for miles. Just, 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 just think in the horizon, all these dots. Okay, they're coming a little bit closer. All of a sudden there's this hmm for miles. You hear this hmm. And all of a sudden you can now see, you make out planes. 
Now they're up above you and you know what those planes are going. They are on their way to Oslo because the Germans have taken over the factories in Oslo and they're now making their war things to invade England. So now these planes are now on their way to Oslo. I asked her, I said, look, could you see the bombing? Could you hear the bombing? No. Well, Norway's full of hills, right? So Oslo was just over that hill. <laughs> so she never did see it. But you know what? With being a Norwegian, you're always so proud of their underground. Every word she said, every sentence she said, oh, but we had a good underground. Because if it wasn't for the underground, um, the Germans would have invaded England. So they're very, very, very proud of, but she would never speak of it. Her father, uh, every day, had a very high rate in the fish to come for coffee. I asked her, said, well, weren't you scared? Oh, no. Norwegians are very gentle people. And the Germans knew that. They had no trouble coming into Ka and to Norway because the Russians, or, sorry, the Germans weren't going to hurt them. So, um, but she always said, oh, but we have this great underground. <laughs> I asked her, I said, well, didn't they steal your livestock or your garden? Oh, no, they were well fed at the barracks. We were never, ever scared, she said. So, you know, it just puckles my mind. So when mother came over, she loved being a nurse and she couldn't figure out why everybody wasn't a nurse. She even said, me, she says, you should have been a nurse. I said, oh no, mother, <laughs> I can't imagine that. But she would take our kids, our girls, she would take them to the hospital. She would show them around the hospital thinking, oh God, I'm gonna make one of these nurses yet. <laughs> and you know what? She's got two of them. And Stephanie also is in the medical field. So she was so happy when that happened. So thank you. <laughs> but we always knew mother was the nurse with the accent. I didn't have to tell anybody that her name. I would just say, oh, she's the one with the accent. And they knew right away who she was. So I never had to worry. But we never knew she had an accent, of course, right? We never knew mother had an accent. We knew she would pronounce words wrong especially pizza. For the longest time, mother would go, pizza. And go, mother, 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 it's pizza. Oh, no, no, it's pizza. And I go, okay, whatever. You know how you jump on her. Remember that, Morris? Remember how we'd jump on her when she'd say that? I said, okay, you know what? She said pizza. <laughs> but, but mother was um, always so proud of being a Norwegian. She took as many of us over until that fateful fall she had over there. She tried her best. So she's hoping you all will go over to Norway and see her country. Unfortunately, she would not gonna be able to see it from with us, but she would love you to go see it. I asked her, I said, well, what did you do when you were younger? Oh, we would, we, um, we would cross country ski lots and not, not much else. They couldn't afford very much. But one thing she tried with us was when wintertime was on, CBC would come on on Saturdays and we watched ski jumping and cross country skiing. So that way she could show us this is what the regions are all about. <laughs> so a, a lot of times we would watch the uh, Winter Olympics, or yeah, Winter Olympics with her. So one day, um, the Norwegian skiers showed up. Oldru came with his fancy pets, and Mother would say, that's not Norwegian, we're very dull. And I thought, Mother, you're saying you're dull. Everybody in this town knows how well Mother looked. She was so proud of that. She always had nice earrings and her necklace and everything matched. And she was so proud, even going to the hospital to visit Dad. She cared about how she looked. At the Haven, we all know she was such a news person. But at the Haven, when she had time, she would just sit in her room, she'd watch the shopping channel. I said, you're watching the shopping channel? Oh, but I gotta keep up to date with what the, the fashions are. And I thought, okay, mother. But otherwise, she watched news. So she would watch news right early in the morning, and then she would get to uh, breakfast with all the residents, and then she'd tell them everything that's going on in the world. So she was there 
news person, and they actually miss her because she's not able to do it anymore. But she also loved to shop. Ellen, she'd go to Ellen's to Penticton. Other than the fact that it was warm, she loved to shop there. Sarah would take her shopping. And garage sales, she came home with so many things that she thought, oh, there's somebody's treasure. So she'd say, do you think you'd want this? I'd say, oh, no, I think Wendy would want that. <laughs> and Wendy did get a lot of things from garage sales. Um, okay, so she introduced us to many uh, Norwegian uh, dishes. Everyone likes her Norwegian pancakes and her kroonkaka. We also liked her fish and kaka. Oh, it was wonderful stuff with almond flavoring. And Mother would tease us with these little slivers of this. And I thought, oh, but she said you would eat the whole thing if it wasn't just slivers. I thought, oh, God, Mother, this is so good. But it was a lot of work. <laughs> so when we, we had a lot of family gatherings, Mother just loved to sit back and just listen to it all. They would have, we would have some good card games with that. And Mother would just sit and listen to it all. And she would just smile. She just loved it. She loved living in that big house on Yukon. Yukon. Then we moved to the, they moved to the hillside and then um, where she always planted this big garden. I don't know why, but she had to have lots of beans for that soup, which Adam really liked. I didn't because all these beans, but Adam really liked it. And then she, uh, we'd have these gatherings and right away Shannon told him we get a phone call for eggs. And then Marilyn Henning, we gotta have Marilyn buns. So she always got that phone call too. But of course that had to stop with COVID. Now, my last little bit is, I've always been a believer of Facebook. Because I came to, I'm on a page called Old Saskatchewan. I don't know if many, if many of you do. I know Morris does because he likes the history. But I came across this picture of this person. And God above me, I thought, oh my God, who is this person? I've seen this person before. So then I did some research on her, and oh my God, it's got this superb elevator on it. I thought, oh my God, maybe I do know this person. And, she, and this lady described this, and as a missionary, and she was home from uh, Indonesia. I thought, oh my God, it's her. So I couldn't get to mom quick enough to let her know that, mother, I have found Anne Morganty. You know, this was a very deep, passionate friend with mother. They lived together before mother was married. They lived in the nurse's residence. And Anne had come home because she needed uh, to make money to take back to the Philippines. Because, you know, living in missionary, they're very poor. And also for her flight. So Anne got a job at the hospital and they lived together. They, they biked around town. They went to hockey games. They spent so much time together. I got them together for one phone call. This was, the lady who'd put it on the, uh, the page was actually Peter and Agatha Reed's daughter. Now I told mother about, she says, oh my God, they must have had 18 kids, you know, she said. And I think I was there for every one of them. <laughs> so, you know, so I told this lady that and we did get them, we, did, we got Anne Morkentine and mother on one phone call before she passed. You should have seen the smile on her face. I wish I had gotten together sooner. So this is why I kind of agree with Facebook. Of course, there's, there's lots that I don't agree with. But it was so worth it to get them together. And another person I did get together with mother, some of you will remember, is the Poon family. Lem Poon was a nurse with mother here. Um, the Poon family is a very big history for Robert. Um, Lem was home because her daughter Nancy, if you remember the family, Nancy's my age, Nancy had passed away. And Lem was back in Saskatoon and would love to have gotten them together. Because mother would have, mother loved to visit. And Lem would have been the one person that she would just dearly have loved to have said hi to. But unfortunately, we didn't have that chance, so I'm sorry I've taken so long, but I know there's bits and pieces of people that you will recognize, so thank you for listening.
Hi. He's my support. <laughs> that was nice, Marie. Mom was very special. She, she put herself aside for her family 100%. Am I doing it? Can you hear me there? Okay. So her goal coming to Canada was to be an RN. She became an RN. She fell in love with Dad, and that started the journey. Four children, worked hard as a nurse, a farm wife, and keeping all us kids busy. We were, she believed, keep kids busy. We were in choir, piano lessons, all sports, driving us everywhere. My friends were in and out, like, it, it was great. Um, she herself was also busy. She was with numerous social groups. She was in one group, I think it was called STAR. I don't know what it was. It was a secret organization, but she always dressed up in this beautiful outfit and the beautiful brooches, and I'm like, where is she going? And I think they did a lot of, what did they do? I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Maybe this drank, I don't know. But, <laughs> but it was, she would just look so beautiful. She'd leave the house and always look so nice. And I loved all those brooches. But she was just busy. Um, she kept an enormous garden on the farm, which, of course, the rest of us had to help work this enormous garden, which I never liked. But, man, I liked the raspberries and the raspberry bushes and those peas and just busy times. Dad was busy on the farm. D Dad was a hard worker. She took care of the household. He took care of the farm. Uh, one of my favorite memories in his um, harvest time. I loved harvest time. Dad would be in the field. We never see him, and that doesn't, that's not what I loved. I loved <laughs> going to the field. Mom would make those delicious cabbage rolls, and we would pack up, and we'd go have supper in the field. Dad have his coffee, get back on the tractor, and off he'd go. It was, it was nice. It was, that's, and the sun sets, it was beautiful. So Mom, of course, would get into the nursing career, very proud of it. And she was always very cognizant in how she was looking and looking professional and all the pins everywhere. And I love when everybody in town comes up and says, oh, your mom was my nurse when I had my daughter, my son. Oh, yeah, when my blah, blah, husband was in the hospital, whatever. And it's just really nice and reassuring. And everybody spoke so highly of her. And that was nice. She went through a lot of generations at that Robert Hospital. I was proud of her. She worked with a good crew at the hospital, too. They're all wonderful ladies. And she made lifelong friends who she continued to lunch and spend time with us as long as she was able to. Now, the Norwegian. Mom was very proud, of course. I was fortunate to go with her um, to Norway in, in the 90s. And then Dennis and I went a couple of years ago. And um, Aunt Madi, Aunt Madi the only sibling left. But dear family, dear people. So mom always, like I said, kept up with sports. Those Winter Olympics, no one could beat the Norwegians. And she was always che cheering both Norway and Canada. And I said to her one time, who do you, would you actually cheer for? Like, who, who is your team? And she goes, well, I am Canadian, you know. And I'm, okay, <laughs> Canada. <laughs> and then the ice cream. Everybody, our family is just an ice cream family. Um, Mom and Dad, we'd go on trips and we'd, we'd go to Saskatoon and we'd have to stop at Purdue. Like, we just drive through everywhere. They stopped everywhere. They loved to stop for coffee and soup, ice cream, ice cream. Um, they both loved it. And I was visiting in long term one day, and it was during COVID, so I was only allowed in her room and I couldn't go elsewhere. But there was a knock on the door and they were like, oh, Marie, they have ice cream out there with toppings. And she looked at me and she goes, sorry, got to go. She, <laughs> she ditched me for the ice cream. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> put a smile on my face. That was pretty sweet. And I, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. She's got some of the, like those good old nurse friends and Mary and <laughs> Mary and Joan. You, you guys are so special. I'm glad you were both able to make it. And um, growing up, I didn't think you're selfish as a kid. You don't think of those special things your mother does for you. She always put us first. She never talked about her feelings or herself. And as I got older, I grew more to respect all she did. She started opening up, and we had some wonderful conversations. I learned a lot about Mom. I wish we had more time. Love you, Mom.
Well, I want to start to say Sarah loved her mum and dad dearly. And I don't know all the stories that these guys know because they all grew up with her. But I have a few stories <laughs> of, of mum. And Maureen, the first thing I can tell you is I noticed she had an accent. <laughs> because when I joined the family, she was the very first one I met. And I'm looking at her and she goes, she goes, what's wrong? And I said, well, you, you can't talk funny. She goes, well, I'm from Norway. I said, oh, right on. She goes, yeah, we both have accents. I said, yeah, so they can't pick on me, not on my own, right? So she said, welcome to the family. Anyway, I want to share a few things about mum. Mum was a brilliant cook. She made the best potato salad ever. And when she, she did sausage up in the oven, and we had sausage and potato salad, it was just to die for. The only problem was, as we all got older, and Adam got older, she decided to be more, less salt, less butter, <laughs> less this, less that, and this potato salad become bland. And, bland. <laughs> and I said to Sarah, I said, can you please get that recipe before it goes away? <laughs> okay, the other thing, uh, Morris made a comment earlier there about mum. Mum's driving was terrible. <laughs> okay, anybody, anybody disagree with me in the family? Her, ter her driving was terrible. She couldn't see past her nose. Anyway, she always laughed about it too, so which was good. I want to share one story. Um, when, when Sarah got sick, Mum came in the Saskatoon to help out. And <clears throat> um, Sarah needed a bath, and so we got her all set up. And she, we put a stool in the bath, and she was sitting in the stool, and I was going to bath her. And mum was standing at the door looking at me, and I looked at her and I said, do you want a bathroom? And you should have seen her light up. And the both of them just looked at each other, and she bathed Sarah, and it was just the most beautiful thing ever to see a mother and her daughter connect again. And Marie was such a beautiful woman. Inside, she, she put everybody else first before her, and she's just perfect. And she told me once that I, I was her son, and I was very proud that she counted me as her son. And she always looked after me. And a little sidebar, um, she always looked after me until Dennis came along. <laughs> he was a new guy, so she had to look after him. But anyway, on that same day where she bathed Sarah, um, it, Sarah couldn't breathe on her own, so she had a machine to, to, to breathe with. But the machine sat in the living room, and there was a 150 foot of cord that would lead to the bedroom and she was in the bedroom. So I made lunch, I, I gave mum hers, I took Sarah hers, I came back down and I started eating mine and Sarah said something and mum jumped up right away and I said, careful, careful, and she ran around the corner and she stood on the, the, the uh, cord and she fell. But she went down flat on her nose. So, so all I, I can hear is Sarah, Mom, Mom, John, what's wrong? I said, nothing, nothing. And I, I picked Mom up, and the blood was everywhere, and I didn't know what to do. So I'm trying to stop the bleeding, and I took first aid in the military, but this was way above my, my pay grade. So, so I, I, and she says to me, well, get, get, get some towels and roll them. So I rolled them, and I wiped them, and I put them up her nose. I laid her on the couch, but the blood just kept coming and coming. And lucky for me, there was a nurse coming in that morning to look at Sarah, and I said, listen, I know it's not your problem, I said, but my mother-in-law just fell. Could you have a look? So she made her a bandage and put it up her nose. And she said, you know, you've got to take her to the hospital. I said, yes, I do. So I, take, I took mom to the hospital. And, and this is the funny part. We're sitting in the, in the emergency. And we actually, I went to city hospital because I, the rest were not nice. And this was a really nice emergency, actually, at city. So we went there. And the lady says, well, you know, we close at 8. So if we keep her here... Um, we'll have to send you somewhere else. And I said, no, no, we no, we'll, we'll stay here. No, no. So the doctor comes in anyway, takes a look. Oh, so, can you take clothes off? So I stood up to walk out. She goes, no, you can stay. I said, no, no, she's my mother-in-law. <laughs> Not my mother. <laughs> but they, I, I think Maureen, you come and got her that day because she was bleeding. So like after, afterwards, she took, took her home. But I brought mum home. And Curtis was back living with us and Curtis came home and Bonnie, my friend, was looking after mom while I took, well, or after Sarah. So as soon as I took mom home, I picked Sarah up, put Sarah in the car and took Sarah to the hospital. And then that day, Sarah never ever did come home after that. But mom kept telling me and apologizing to me for days and days that she was sorry. And, and I said, you know what, mom, accidents happen and 
Like, she's always been there for me. She's always been there for Sarah, for all the, actually all the grandkids. She loved the grandkids. That was her one, her biggest thing. I just I just can't say enough about her. She's such a beautiful person, and we're a very sorry family now because we've we've lost mum and dad now. So it's tough. We've had a really tough couple of years here. So, but anyway. Marie was a beautiful person, and everybody in this room knows that because that's why you're all here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for all those um, stories and laughs and words of, of Marie's life. Um, we're now going to sing on Eagle's Wings. It is printed on the insert of your order of service. It's also page 808 if you need to have the music in the red book. Um, on Eagle's Wings. John 13, 34 to 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, 
but the same God gives ability to all for their particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. The Spirit gives one person a message full of wisdom, while to another person the same Spirit gives a message full of knowledge. One and the same Spirit gives faith to one person, while to another person he gives the power to heal. The Spirit gives one person the power to work miracles, to another the gift of speaking God's message, and to yet another the ability to tell the difference between gifts that come from the Spirit and those that do not. To one person he gives the ability to speak in strange tongues, and to another he gives the ability to explain what is said. But it is one and the same Spirit who does all this as he wishes. He gives a different gift to each person. Nursing as a profession requires a great deal of sacrifice. They see and experience other people's pain and suffering on a daily basis. They make sure that every patient receives care and medical attention. They work hard and endure long hours of fatigue. They have to be strong not only for themselves but also for others. They provide hope and comfort to their patients while ignoring their own needs. Suffice it to say, it's hard to be a nurse, right? Right? One must not only have skills and knowledge, but also patience, compassion, and a dedication to serve others. Their selflessness and compassion make today's world better than it was yesterday. Doesn't that sound like Marie? She was gifted with those skills. And she was so proud to be a nurse. It was a true calling for her. She was so good at her profession and enjoyed it so much, as Maureen said, she couldn't figure out why everyone wasn't a nurse. Level-headed and unflappable, Marie loved the challenge of not knowing what was coming through the door next. She brought many people into the world and with compassion helped others to pass on. She was thrilled to have her passion for caring for others passed down to three of her granddaughters who now work in health care. Besides the hectic schedule of a working nurse and being married to a farmer, Marie kept busy raising her family, going to ball tournaments, doing ceramics and crocheting. She completed many Afghans. There was one, as you came in, did you see it on the, on the chair? She created them with love for the people that she loved. She crocheted them carefully, putting time, effort, and love into every stitch. Working, taking care of her home and her family, and later volunteering her time with the UCW, the Seniors Club, regularly getting together with the retired nursing staff and the Avoca Community Club. All of these things were the threads of her life that wove the people in her life together. And we are all joined together as well, connected as one big family. God also takes special care to tend to each piece of yarn with love, intertwining us all into the rich tapestry of life. We are all those pieces of yarn. And we can find comfort in the fact that together, we created an Afghan of caring, love, and friendship that surrounded Marie in her life. We are given this life, this chance on earth, to learn about love and growth, failure and pain, giving and sharing, meeting and parting, so that we can know what a glorious gift we've received. Life here and now should not be hastened or squandered, but enjoyed and cherished and shared with loved ones. And Marie understood that as she loved family gatherings. She always wanted everyone to get along and keep in touch. And it was important to her for family to stay together. When a good person dies, family and friends gather for many reasons. Life has touched them with grief and they need one another's company for their own comfort. To be together, to be able to draw off the strength and support of others can help put us on the path to healing. We will miss Marie, mother, grandmother, friend, neighbor, co-worker. You will miss her dearly during your family gatherings and holidays. 
But remember that threads of her remain woven throughout your lives in the memories that you share, in the pickled herring and the lefsa and the kroon kaka, in the afghans that she made for you, putting her love into every stitch. As she joined you together as a family with her love, may you continue to come together in love. And when you gather, may you feel her with you as part of the tapestry of your lives. I read now a poem by Colonel Marcus, and I, when I found it, it really spoke to me, and it really made me think of Marie, and I hope it does the same for you. I am standing on the seashore. Suddenly, a ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts out for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. And I stand and I watch her until at length she is only a ribbon of white cloud just above where sea and sky mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there, she's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight is all. For she's just as large in mast and hull and spar as she was when she left my side and just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the same moment, when someone at my side says, there she's gone, there are other voices on the far and distant shore, ready to take up the glad shout, look, she has arrived. Marie's light shone on all who knew her. And we give thanks for the life of Marie. We give thanks for her caring ways that made her community a better place to live. And for her friendship and her love and her laughter and her concern that was present in our lives. Let's pray together. Loving God, your embrace supports us in life, and your spirit watches over us in death. Help us to feel your loving presence. May we remember Marie in love, trusting her to your keeping. Compassionate God, we thank you for Marie, for the life she led, for the love she shared, for the visits we enjoyed. We thank you for the friendship she gave, the krumkaka she made, the Afghans she crocheted. We thank you for the care she gave to her patients, the dedication she showed to her profession, for her gifts of compassion and healing that she offered others. We ask that Marie will live on in the hearts and minds of her family and friends, inspiring us by her loving example. And a nurse's prayer, but I think this can all, um, this can, this, this works for us as well. Let me dedicate my life today to the care of those who come my way. Let me touch each one with a healing hand and the gentle art for which I stand. And then tonight when day is done, oh, let me rest in peace if I have helped just one. Amen. Following the service, all are welcome at the cemetery for the interment. And then the family invites you to join them after at the Prairie Land Community Center for refreshments and fellowship. With love and care, Marie connected you all together as a family. Take all that she has given you and continue to do the same for everyone in your life remembering that we are each a thread in the Afghan of life. Go in peace, dear lady, gentle healer, dancer, creator, loving wife, mother, grandmother, treasured friend. Rest easy knowing your shift is over and your work here is done. Bless your heart, Marie.
Let us be patient, let us be kind, make us unselfish without being blind. We may have faith to make mountains fall, but if we lack love, then we are nothing at all. May the love that we share bring strength and joy to our hearts, and the peace of this community be with us until we meet again. Amen. And we will sing Amazing Grace. If you all stand. <laughs>